I want to ask a question. I'm going to open it by this. I'm going to open with this. I'm open. Father, thank you for your word tonight. I pray that you seed my mouth with the words to speak, God. And open the hearts of the hearers to hear and receive the word of God as an engrafted word. In the name of Jesus, we bind every satanic assignment of the enemy against the people of God that would try to keep them from taking the word into their life, internalizing it, and using it to become better. Father, we decree now and we say that the devil's assignment is now broken over our lives and we walk in victory in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. amen. I want to ask you a question. It's a hypothetical question, but it's one for you to think about. And I want you to think real long and real hard about it. I want to ask you a question. Would you rather struggle or suffer? Write that down. Would I rather struggle or suffer? I promise you I'm going somewhere tonight. I, would, would, would I rather struggle or suffer? Say that with me. Would I rather would I struggle, struggle or suffer? Or Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, would you rather you struggle, struggle or suffer? Now, Elder Long, what in the world are you talking about? Why would you ask a question like that? It seems like those words are the same word. But in the context in which I use it tonight, I am not using it as the same word. Because what I found out is this. Many of us, how many of us can be honest that there have been times in our life that we have known something that we were supposed to do and we deliberately made the choice to go the opposite direction come on y'all with me tonight we've known what we should do or we've known what we shouldn't do and very deliberately by an act of our own will we have made the opposite choice Mm -hmm. Now let me let me go. So here's here's where I I hang my hat as it relates to do I want to struggle or do I want to suffer? See now I, I'm not saying I'm not using the word struggle in the terminology that much of the church world uses the word struggle because much of the church world uses the word struggle. They say I have an issue or I have a struggle, but the truth of the matter is they don't really have a struggle. They have something that they want to keep doing. That's right. Y'all not going to talk to me up in here. They've got something that they want to keep doing, but what we call it is a struggle. No, see, because if you're in a struggle with something, that means you are applying resistance against it. Are y'all going to talk to me tonight? If I know that I want to go and spend five hundred dollars, and and I got five hundred dollars, but I don't need to spend five hundred dollars, if I know and I want to go do that, and that's my temptation because maybe emotionally I've been struggling, and shopping is my outlet. Right. So now there's a temptation to go and do the shopping to go spend my five hundred dollars that I really don't need to spend. So now it's not a struggle if I say, well, I'm gonna go out to the coach uh, to the coach store and just look and see what's going on I'm not struggling I'm agreeing with what I really want to do I'm agreeing with my temptation yes. Amen. Now, now it might not be shopping you got to fill in the blank on what show on what show yeah 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 what what your it is but now watch this see and much of the church world tries to say you know we try to use the word struggle interchangeably with having an issue and having stuff that we don't really want to address that's not what I'm talking about tonight I'm talking about the actuality of applying pressure against the thing that is pressuring you the temptation to cut somebody out <laughs> let's just keep it real simple the temptation to cuss somebody out the temptation to go off the temptation to go sleep around the temptation to do this that or the other to go back to drinking to go back to smoking the temptation am I 
able and am I willing to apply pressure against the thing that is pressuring me? Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And what you have to understand and what I'm going for tonight is the fact that when we start talking about do I, am I willing to, would I rather struggle or suffer? See, struggle means it will hurt you in the process of resisting. Oh, yes. Struggle requires that it will hurt in the process of resisting. If you got your notes, you need to be taking notes on this tonight. Struggle requires that it hurts in the process of resisting. And do you not know that's the reason why most of us don't struggle? Because it hurts to resist the thing that is pulling at you. Mm -hmm. it, can anybody attest that I'm telling the truth? It hurts when you really, when you get, okay, have you ever had somebody who disrespected you? Did something just really just, they should not have done. They were just so downright disrespectful and everything in you wanted to go and let them have it because of their disrespect towards you and the Holy Ghost told you shut your mouth and when he told you to shut your mouth and God said be quiet in, in the inside it was eating at you God have mercy it was eating at you God, can I please just say this one, any of y'all ever say that can I just say this one thing y'all ever ask God that when the Holy Ghost told you to shut up. Yeah. Well, will you just let me, Lord, 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 can you just let me say this? One thing, please. I, I'll be all right if I can just say this. Yeah. And the Lord says, nope. Uh, yes. Amen. <laughs> so, so, so here it is. Again, would you rather struggle or suffer? Y'all ready to walk? Let's go. I submit to you tonight. Well, let me. I feel like I feel like Bishop Page, Mom. I gotta figure out where to jump in. <laughs> uh, we gave a challenge to every member of Kingdom Life Church. And the challenge was for all of us to read a chapter of Proverbs each day. That was the challenge. Some of you have done it. Some of you haven't done it. If you've fallen off, I want to challenge you to get back on. Now, I'm going to tell you this because the Holy Ghost spoke this to me the other night. After, after I went to revival, the Lord spoke to me. He said, I want Kingdom Life to go through Proverbs again. Amen. When we get through it this time, he said, I want you to go through it again. Another 30, at least 31 days. Now, there's a reason why I said at least. Uh-huh. Listen, listen to me closely. I, I was talking to First Lady the other day and I said, you know, I wouldn't be angry or upset if one of the members came to me and said, well, Elder Long, I, 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 I couldn't go through a whole chapter in the course of a day because as I was reading through Proverbs, there was a couple of verses that really stuck to me. Yeah. So I needed to meditate on those two verses today. Yeah. So I didn't go through a whole chapter today. I just had to stick with those two verses because those were the two verses I really needed. Yeah. I said, I wouldn't be offended by that. I wouldn't be upset. I wouldn't feel like the church has not been, is not, that member is not being obedient. Because to be very honest with you, I would rather you, if there's a verse that you need and a verse that God is speaking to your heart, a verse that God is calling to light in your life, I would rather you stop and chew on it a while. Yeah. 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 Whoa! Yeah. 
the spirit of God would rather you stop and chew on what you need for a while from the book of Proverbs. Here is my entry point into struggle versus suffer. Here's what I found out. Most of us, I asked you the question earlier, how many of us have known to do right and did wrong deliberately? Can we be honest and say that when we look at some of the things that are going on in our lives right now, much of it is the result of our decisions that went against what we knew was wise. Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. We are, see, 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 Bible, Bible, be not deceived. God is not, talk to me, y'all. God is not what? Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now, why do we think that we can, we can go against wisdom and think that we're going to reap good benefits? Many of us are reaping the, the, the results of our own poor decisions. Amen. Amen. We didn't, we, we, we would, not, God will use somebody in your life to tell you, you really ought not to do that. It really, you really should do this this way. And you know it's godly wisdom. And because you feel like you don't want to offend anybody or you don't want to hurt anybody or you don't want to this, that, or the other, you say, well, I, I know what they said and I know that was good wisdom, but this time I'm going to go this way because I just really don't want anybody else to have anything to say about what I did. Amen. Well, let me help you. I hear God. I hear God. I hear God. Let me just help you. Many times when God starts dealing with you, whether through wisdom that he gives you through a person, a godly leader, or a godly person in your life or whether it's the Holy Spirit that speaks to you directly words of wisdom. Many times people will not understand the choices that you make when you make them. Amen. I wish I had a talk back church tonight. Yes. People are not going to always agree when you say, I'm sorry, I can't go to that party with y'all tonight. Mm -hmm. People are not going to always agree. They're going to say, oh, she's being super spiritual. When you say, no, nah, you know, maybe if it had been another time, I would have went to the movies with you, but I can't go to the movies tonight because I, I, I need to spend some time with God. They're going to think you're trying to be deep and spiritual. Or, or wait, let me take you further. Not only will they think you're trying to be deep and spiritual, they will now say to you, Oh, 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 well, you judging me. I didn't say anything to you about what you're doing. If you want to go to the movies, go to the movies. Doesn't mean anything's wrong with that. It's just right this moment, I can't go. This moment, I can't go. Because what we got to figure out is God wants to speak to us at times and we've been too big. I don't know how I slipped into that, but I'm talking to somebody tonight. God wants to speak to us at times, but we've been too busy and we won't shut down and listen to what God's trying to say to us, whether through wisdom in people or whether through his own word. Oh God, many times he'll be calling us to get in the book and we won't even pick up the book. Oh, I'm in something now. We would rather go to the word network and let somebody preach to us or go to TBN and let somebody preach to us and get it the easy way rather than picking up this book ourselves and saying, God, speak to my life. Amen. I'm in it now. I'm in it. I'm in it. I'm in it. We would rather hear somebody preach to us so that we can get spoon fed. Well, my question to you is, when are we going to grow up? Uh-oh, uh-oh. We gonna grow up. Yeah, yeah, I'm a partaker in it too, because there's another level I gotta walk in. But but let me go further. And when we turn on TBN or Word Network looking for our word, what we do is we as long as they preach what we think we need for that moment, that's the thing that we will stay tuned to. So 
So if, if you're going through and your emotions and they on TV and they're preaching about God's going to bring you out of the emotional situations, what do you do? You sit right there in front of that TV and you're glued in and you say, priest, reverend, priest. But the truth of the matter is some of the problem is not emotional situations. It's places where you were disobedient. And what God wants to address is your disobedience, not to pat you on your back and tell you it's going to be all right. God doesn't just want to pat you on your back and tell you, oh, baby, it's okay. No, some stuff he wants you to get it together, get it right, get it fixed. Mm. But that's what we do. We'll tune in to what Reverend Bobo says. <laughs> and we be shouting around the house. We be calling folk up on the phone saying, Yeah, so and so was on the phone TV today and he was preaching the word just for me. <laughs> but you weren't spiritual enough because you haven't been in the face of God to know that God was really trying to rebuke you so that you were coming to alignment. I see it's quiet. It's real quiet. Now if I holler y'all about to get blessed, folk will be up on their feet. If I said, if God gave me a word and said somebody's about to be a millionaire, folk will be running up and down this aisle. But these are the words we need to be celebrating on when God wants to bring us into alignment with his word and with his will when he wants to deal with us. Because the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, read around chapter 13, that those who are bastards he does not deal with, but those that he loves, his sons are the ones that he chastens. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. See, we don't want, we don't want the rod. We don't want the rod. We don't want God to correct us. We don't want him to correct us. We don't want him to beat us. Hmm? No, Sister Mika, please do. Beat me if you have to. I need you to beat me, God, so I can get in alignment if I have to, if that's what it takes. But Lord, here, wait, here's what I'm really going after. Now let me take it a step further. Here's what I'm going after. Where we need to get to is that we start to walk in a place where we don't need the beating. Mm-hmm. My God from Zion. <laughs> See, here it is, chapter 12. It says, if you endure chasing, God deal with you as what? Sons. For what son is he whom the father does not chasten? But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, there are ye bastards and not sons. Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 7. Write it down. All right. Somebody ought to say, God, chastise me if you need to. God, chastise me. Yes. Mm. I don't want to get beat. Please beat me. Wait, 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 wait. Psalm 23. Thy rod and thy staff. Y'all see, see, y'all just read that. Y'all just skipped all over that. Thy rod. I can't hear nobody. Thy rod. Thy rod. Thy rod. Foolishness abounds in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction. All right. All right. But the rod of correction brings him back into alignment. Thy rod and thy staff. The staff is the hooked part that allows him to reach out and pull you and bring you back. But sometimes to get you to keep from going the direction you've been going, he's got to use. Okay, I, I don't want to stay there because I'll get stuck there and then we'll be, yeah. So, so here, 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 back to my premise. Would I rather struggle or suffer? Okay, look at your life. Look at your life right now. Look at your life. Think about your life. What addiction do you have in your life? You say, well, I'm not, I'm not addicted to drugs or alcohol or anything. 
But maybe you're addicted to attention. Mm -hmm. what, what, what addiction do you have in your life? Maybe you're addicted to people validating you. You always need to be validated. Did I do a good job? Was I all right? Is it an addiction? We have addictions. Everybody, and I don't care. Granny, I'm going to bother you for a minute. I don't care if it's your Pepsi. <laughs> Now, I'm, I'm bothering Granny in jest, but I want you to think about something. Would you rather struggle or would you rather suffer? Now, here's the question. They will tell you, just like on the cigarette pack, they tell you, surgeon general warning, warning that if you smoke cigarettes, these are going to be the results. Hazardous to your health, but we smoke them anyway. Okay, do you not know that if you look at the studies about uh, Coca-Colas and all those drinks, not just Coca-Cola, but those cola drinks and sodas, do you not know they put enough sugar in one can of soda that if you were to eat it straight, it would actually cause your body to begin to vomit violently? And what, oh Lord, have mercy. And what they do, part of the reason why they have the acids that they have in it is to chase down the sugar so your body can handle it. Yeah. What are you saying, Long? I'm going to just give you a parallel real quick. That's how the devil likes to do with some of our addictions. It'll be stuff that will kill us slowly but surely, but he'll chase it down with something so we can handle it just a little bit. Oh. Oh, God, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Mm -hmm. So, so, but watch. Would you rather struggle or would you rather suffer? Because I, I just said they put enough sugar in one can of soda. And there are people, not granny, there are people who drink two liters of soda a day. But now, okay, if they are addicted to a two liter of soda a day, think about this. If they have to give it up, it's a struggle. But if they get diabetes, it's suffering. Amen. Now do you see the picture I'm trying to give you? Would you rather struggle and fight to get out of whatever your struggle is? Or would you rather suffer because you chose to go against the, the warning of the surgeon? Yes. Yes. That's good. That's good. Am, I, am I helping somebody tonight? Yes. 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 Are you going to suffer? Or struggle. Think about this. They tell us overeating is bad for us. I'm really trying to go somewhere else, and I'm going to get there in just a moment because I got some scriptures to give you. But they overeating is bad. But we sit down at the table and we go in. <laughs> We throw down the plate stacked. And then when you got gastric problems and all kind of stuff going on, then you complaining. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Got acid, acid reflux, like she said. Or oh, watch this. Or oh, now you struggle because you've gained so much weight. I'm, I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna walk tonight. I'm gonna walk tonight. I don't. If you get mad, it's all right. I'd rather tell you the truth. I told y'all I'm back tonight, and I'm back to put the devil on the run. See what you gotta. Now, so now we gain all this weight. Then we gotta have knee surgery and hip surgery because our bodies are overweight and they they weren't designed to carry all of what we're carrying. And Well, I just got to have my bread. I just got to have my potatoes. I just got No, you don't just got to have. You just you just don't want to struggle. Yes. Because we're so used to stuff. 
Now I promise y'all, I got, I got somewhere I got to take you tonight. <sighs> We're so used to different aspects of our lifestyle, whatever. See, and the thing I love about the word of God is that it deals with each one of us individually while it's talking collectively. Yeah. 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 Woo! Yeah. So Sister Tamika over here will be sitting over here and the word, same word that came out hits her and she's thinking about, well, I need to fix this. I need to fix that. I need to fix this. And while, and then Sister Pat over here saying, but I need to fix this. And they're not even talking about the same things. Amen. Amen. Woo, this is getting good. Amen. This is getting good, y'all. Yes. And see, so... Lord, help me. Help me get all this out tonight, God, or as much of it as possible. And so, we would rather suffer than struggle. We make poor financial decisions to appease us at a particular moment. Yes. We go get loans to appease ourselves at a given moment. Amen. We do all kind of stuff to appease ourselves, even financially. Watch this. Oh, Lord, I hear God. And sometimes the spirit of fear will cause us to do something that will cost us more than in the long run. That's right. That's true. That's right. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. If you don't obey the voice of wisdom, it will cost you more in the long run. You might want to write that down. If I don't obey the voice of wisdom, it will cost me more in the long run. Lord, I'm trying to behave tonight, y'all, but I see so much in the spirit right now. God is literally talking to all of us. Amen. Go, eh, yeah, I got to give you some scripture now. Go to Proverbs, 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 Proverbs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Proverbs, chapter number one. Some of y'all thought when Elder Long said, Go read Proverbs a chapter a day. Y'all thought I was just giving you an assignment just for busy work. Just for, just for the sake of saying we spiritual. That's what y'all thought. Y'all thought I was just being, you know, we're going to be a spiritual church. Do me a favor, man. Go the other way. Go the other way. It shouldn't be. It should, well, go ahead. Go ahead and unlock it. That's fine. Um, but but here, here, here. We we may have thought that I was just telling you, do it just to do it. But I wasn't. But I wasn't. Look at Proverbs chapter one. I want to start with verse number. Well, let's start at verse one. It says, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. And then it gives us the reason why these Proverbs were given. Verse 2. To know wisdom and instruction. To perceive the words of understanding. To receive. Mm, I, I wish I had a church right there. To not just read it. Uh -huh. Receive. receive. Yes. Not just run my eyes across it to say I did something. Yes. But to receive. Receive, to take it in, to make it a part of me, the instruction of wisdom. Yeah. Write this down. Wisdom speaks. Wisdom speaks. Wisdom itself gives instruction. 
Now that's, that's some good stuff right there. It says to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, wait, wait, the Bible, see, see, let me, let me just hit this and run. Church people, when social issues come up, can I please walk the floor for a moment? Y'all gonna let me walk the floor? When, church, when social issues come up in a community of injustice, at best, what we say is, oh, that's so sad. That's right. That's right. Y'all not gonna talk to me. That's what we do. And then don't let the sermon on Sunday morning, if, the, if God leads the preacher to preach on the injustice, we say, oh, no, no, he didn't preach what I needed to hear. Part of you being a Christian, according to the word of God, is that we are to dwell peaceably in the place where God plants us. Yes. Amen. Now, peaceably does not always mean we got to be quiet. Right. There are some issues that we need to stand up on, and the church has been too weak about it. Yes. Church has been too weak yes. when injustices happen. Yes. And watch, oh Lord, I'm, y'all, I'm in something right now. Just can, can I go all the way in? And so what happens is when the church has become, we are just like society that we move on to the next thing. Our attention pan, spans are so low that we look at this. Oh, oh, that's so sad. That baby died because the doctor didn't do right. Oh, that's so sad. The police beat up on this child, whether black or white. Oh Lord, have mercy. The police beat up on the child whether black or white injustice and we say oh that's so sad and, and when the next news report comes on about something else we on to something else that's true. All right. but this book of proverbs that I just read said that these proverbs were written to give us instruction about even handling justice yes. All right. do you see it for yourself is it in the book so, yes, we are going to have to start marching on some stuff. All right, man. We're going to have to start going, taking time out of our schedule to go stand in some places where we don't really want to stand at the risk of looking stupid and being talked about. Amen. All right. That's good. That's good. Because Jesus made sure justice was done. Yes, he did. Okay. All right. Yes. Move, Ferris, move, because you're going to get in trouble. No, I'm not. Mm -mm, I'm home. Look, I'm home. I can preach like this at home. And I'll preach like this on the road, too. <laughs> it says, judgment and equity. Y'all see equity, right? Yeah. Equity means what? Equality. Yeah. Okay. All right. I didn't make it up, right? That's the book, right? Right. Amen. Okay. Now, let me just say this to, the, to my African-American brothers and sisters that are sitting in this sanctuary. I know that there are some that will be watching, by, watching this video that are not of the African-American persuasion. African-American brothers and sisters, we got to quit being so Afrocentric that we discriminate against our, other, our counterparts in other cultures. Amen. We are so black this, black that, black this, black that, that we discriminate and people can't even come in our churches. We, we, they don't even want to be bothered with us outside of when they got to deal with us at work. <laughs> How many of us can say that we have an equal number or close to equal number of friends of other persuasions as we do of our color? <laughs> Oh, Lord, I'm in trouble now. I'm in the deep waters of Minister Lisa. You got me back there. You going to help me through? Okay. Equity. It says to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. See, verse five says a wise man will hear and will increase learning. 
a wise man will hear this and increase learning. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble here too. I'm going to get in trouble. It says a wise man will hear and increase learning. I said this a couple of weeks ago. I said some of us are so, God can never, y'all remember when I said God can't bring you before some dignitary? Y'all remember that? One Sunday morning I said it. He can't bring you in front of a dignitary because you're so busy splitting verbs and adverbs and, and tearing up sentences and I seen, I seen that. No, you didn't. I saw that. You know, I seen them when they did that. No, you didn't see nothing. I saw. We don't speak correct English. And then when someone says to us, hey, you might need to fix that, we get offended. And then we say things like this. Well, I've been out of school 50 years. So if I've just been out of school 50 years, then it just is what it is now. The wise man, increase, when he hears this, he increases learning. There it is. But not just that. But how many of us have taken the time to go learn something new about some other subject that we did not know anything about? I'm, I'm in something. I'm in something right now. See, this is, not, this is not traditional church stuff that we like to talk about, but I need to deal with this because God can't take you to the great places of life that you're trying to get to if you don't know how to discuss things that are beyond church. Amen. Huh? Amen. When I walk around Knoxville, the only thing a lot of people know how to talk about is church, funerals, weddings, and who's sleeping with who. Amen. Do they know how to talk about stock market? Nope. Do they know anything about business? Nope. And they'll tell you, well, I know I got a business down on the inside. You've never studied anything on the internet to figure out how to do the business? Uh-huh. Can, I, can I prophesy to somebody right here? Mm-hmm. Your next level is sitting on Google right now. particularly picking on Sister Paula when I say this, but you you say you got a restaurant or a catering business on the end. I'm just saying this in general, but you just happen to fall in the kind You say you got this in you. Have you done studies to figure out how to take your business to the next level? Have you gone online and looked to see what other people are doing that are better than where, oh God, have mercy, that are better than what you do? So you can learn from that and become better let me let me let me let me let me I'm, I'm gonna use her as an example but I'm talking to any one of us in here okay she's a caterer she's just starting that catering business now one of the reasons when I designed her card I didn't just design it any old way when I created her card I created it with a high class look on purpose now whether she pursues high class or not is up to her now I was talking to a friend of mine last night and I was saying to her how uh, uh, in Knoxville there's not a, this other part my friend is in a metropolitan area so to be able to have somebody in their ministry that does social media ministry and things like that that's kind of common in a metropolitan area but in an area like this to have somebody who is able to do uh, me, uh, social media ministry and media ministry on the regular it's not all that common that's right. and that's not a slap to anybody but this is a more rural area uh-huh. but now let me see so here's what I'm trying to get to let me go back to her so now if sister Paula you go look online at what people who are in in metropolitan areas are doing and you're figuring out how they're doing it to make themselves successful now what is common in the metropolitan area 
ain't so common. Yeah, I know I said ain't. Ain't so common in the rural area. So now it puts you head and shoulders above the other catering companies that are in the city because you went and found more. The wise man. When he hears this, when he hears wisdom, increases learning. Oh God. Now, can, can I stay on Sister Paula, but y'all y'all catch where you fall in. If she goes and increases her learning and finds out new things to do, she does not have to see what we what we complain about is our clientele being limited. Complain that the people that are coming to us are nickeling and diming us to death because they act like they don't have the money to pay for the service that we provide. Well, when you start providing the right service, when you start doing what's in you, oh, come on, somebody, when you start doing what's in you, what God created you to do, whatever abilities on the inside of you, and you begin to increase your knowledge. What happens? Now you become worth more. I just told you, y'all missed the prophecy. Your next level for somebody is sitting on Google right now. Because when you, you talk about, I need God to bless me. I need God to bless my finances. I need God to take me up in another level. Well, your another level is in you grabbing wisdom. Would you rather struggle or suffer? It might be a struggle to press your brain to learn new hairstyles. But learn new hairstyles because you become more valuable and pick up more money the better you can do. Y'all, y'all know, I, I know I got a couple hairstylists in the room. I'm not just talking to them. I'm talking to those who are going to watch this on, on, on YouTube or what have you, on Facebook. I'm trying to get people to understand tonight. God is dealing with me that we are struggling and we are suffering in places where we should have struggled. Because one thing I figured out, y'all better hear this. After a while, if you struggle right, struggles come to an end. Amen. Amen. So, you take the time, learn, get wisdom, get it in your heart, operate in learning, say, I'm going to grow, I'm going to force myself to take on something that I have not taken on before. What happens? I grow. I expand. See, some of you on your job, you some of you been on the same in the same position on your job because you never took the time to go learn somebody else's position. Well, I got too much on me to be learning and doing my job. Well, they they don't see you as an asset, baby. That's the reason why you haven't been advancing because they don't see you as an asset. When they see you as an asset, then you'll be moved into promotion. I'm in something in the Holy Ghost, y'all. When you are seen as as an asset, then you will be moved into promotion. Even I hear God say concerning your life personally, when God can view you as an asset, then he can move you into promotion. Lord. It says the wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall uh, shall attain unto wise counsel. When you really understand, you will watch this. You will seek wise counsel and you will become wise counsel. So somebody, somebody lift one of your hands in the air and say, Lord, move on me to the place where I become wise counsel. Somebody should have hollered and gave God praise on that. God, do you not understand the people that are, I'm not trying to stay in money, but people that are getting paid, people that are getting sought after are the ones who have wisdom. Amen. Look on Facebook. 
Look at the people who have, I'm not talking about movie stars, but I'm talking about people who have something to say. See who has 30, 50, 100,000 followers on Facebook, on the public figure page. Chances are in some area they have become viewed as an expert. You will be sought out in the places where you have expertise. You should write that down. I will be sought out in the places where I have expertise. I'm about to close. Can I have just five minutes? It's eight o'clock. Can I have five minutes? I will be sought out in the places where I have expertise. Dejan, I hope you listen to this, son, because if you catch this stuff early, it said the young man. Uh-huh. Do you hear me? This book said the young man yeah. is going to increase and be blessed. Yeah. The young man, if he gets this. Now, some of us sitting in here right now, 30, 40, 50 and above, wish we had heard some of this stuff years ago. Amen. You got the chance before you even get in your 20s good. Amen. To have wisdom under your belt so to people seek you out for wisdom. Yes. Do you hear me? Uh-uh, talk back to me. Don't shake your head. Thank you. Amen. Rolando, baby girl, if y'all listen and hear when wisdom is poured out, You'll be wise beyond your years. You'll be so wise, people will be looking at you like, hey, I don't understand how, why, they, why they know so much. Yes. I'm not talking about being nosy, dipping in grown folks' business. Yes. I don't do that. Yes. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Make that clear. Mm, make that clear. <laughs> but when wisdom is poured into you, <laughs> when you understand the why, yes. you'll, you'll walk into greater blessing. Okay, watch this. I'm about to close. I didn't even get to Proverbs chapter 4. I guess I'll teach on that Sunday. Now, I've got to preach at 530 here in the city at uh, Pastor Gerard Branch's church. It's called Faith Believers Church. It's on Western. Um, I'll forward you all the address and everything. I got it on my phone. I'll send it to uh, First Lady. It'll be in the bulletin. But at 530 Sunday, I've got to preach. Um, so I'll preach there. Sunday morning, I'm teaching here. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. Amen. So if y'all if y'all want to come and have revival and go all in, y'all come at 5:30 over there, <laughs> and we'll we'll go in and, and yeah. But but here, because I believe God wants to bless our church in ways that we've not been blessed before, and we've been looking for the pie in the sky to fall on us. And it's not going to happen that way for many of us. Now, yes, God is going to reward the diligence of our hands. Many of us have sown seed and so on and so forth. Yes, God's going to bless you on those seeds. But I'm talking about if you want the continual. Oh, yes, God, that just blessed my life right there. See, the, the blessings that come from the seeds we sow are incremental. They come at particular points in time. But the hand, of, I read it to you a couple of weeks ago, the hand of the diligent is blessed. When we are diligent, our diligence puts us in places that cause us to prosper continually. Now that was a good thing to write down. You, you should have written that down right there. Our diligence puts us in places, godly diligence at that, puts us in places that cause us to prosper continually. Amen. Mm. Verse 6 is to understand a proverb and the interpretation the words of the wise they're dark sayings now dark saying sounds real spooky but it's really not spooky only when you pursue wisdom only when you pursue wisdom can God reveal mysteries now that was another good one to write down right there only when you pursue wisdom can God reveal to you mysteries 
If you try, see, ah, ha, 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 this is so good, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You're speaking to us tonight. When you pursue wisdom, then God can reveal mysteries. Can reveal mysteries or will reveal mysteries. How many people, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm going to close it right here. I got so much more, but I, that's why I'm glad I got Sunday. How many people say, check this out. How many people say, I'm tired of church as usual? How many people have for either you said it at some point or you've heard people say it? I'm tired of church as usual. I'm tired of normal church. Can I help you with something? This is going to, if you really listen to me closely, this is going to bless you. When you increase in your wisdom, okay, let me, let me give you Bible. Deep calleth unto the deep. That's what scripture says. Deep calls unto the deep. Deep, uh, where's my phone? I have a, can somebody look that up for me on your phone real quick? I can, well, that's all right, I'll grab it. Um, deep calls unto the deep. Deep calls unto the deep. Let me let me look that up. I'll give you the scripture that goes with it. Um, but here it is. Here's what I want to show you. There are levels of teaching. Psalm 42, verse 7. There are levels of teaching. Even in that are locked up in me right now that I cannot teach but I haven't even tapped into them because the people of kingdom life and this is not to insult you it's not but we because we have not sought wisdom because I just told you when we seek wisdom that's what I said. When we seek wisdom, God can and will reveal mysteries. So what happens is when you begin to seek wisdom as the people of God seated in the pews. God begins to unlock the mysteries both in your personal life and then he begins to unlock it in the leadership who speaks to you because now we've got to share with you on a deeper level. See, I can tell tonight that some of you have been praying because this word that I even gave tonight was deeper than most I've given. Amen. Isn't it? Amen. I went further in tonight into a depth of something and I really only scratched the surface of what God's been dealing with me about. I've only scratched the surface. But because somebody in here has been praying, you pulled this out of me. Amen. Feel it? See you know what I'm saying? You pulled it out. Are you tired of church as usual? You want something more? Go seek wisdom. Seek the wisdom of God. Amen. Seek it. And if you begin to seek the wisdom of God, it will unlock mysteries in your life. Amen. Personally, you'll be riding down the road and stuff will just start to click and make sense. Like, wow, I didn't. I, a plus B equals C. All of a sudden, it makes sense. <laughs> All this time you've been looking at A plus B saying, what in the world is that? Now you look at A plus B equals C and go, wow. It makes sense now. You didn't understand why so-and-so was acting crazy, but because you tapped into wisdom, wisdom told you, oh, well, they are broken right now. I can't expect them to be anything else right now because they're broken. <laughs> See, because you go after the wisdom. Yes. All right. God, teach me. I, I, look, listen, y'all, I don't know how long we're going to be in Proverbs. I don't know how long I'm going to teach from Proverbs. I'm going to teach Proverbs until God says stop. Amen. Amen. Folk, 